Today we're talking about an exciting new feature in Figma, Auto Layout. Auto Layout is an extension of Figma's responsive design features that allow you to create components like buttons that grow when their text changes, or lists that rearrange themselves depending on their content, or nesting auto layout containers to create complicated visual designs that are reactive to their content. It's a very exciting feature, and today I'm gonna to show you some examples on how to use it, how to set it up, and some good resources to look at if you ever have any future questions with it. So let's just dive in. Right here, I've got a very simple list of pills. Think of them as stand-in for list items or what have you. And if I wanted to move these around, let's, let's maybe change their color so we can see what's happening. We'll have this color, this color, come down here, one more, and then just all the way down. Great. So now we've got five different things here. And if I wanted to move them around, we could already do that by uh, using Figma's padding and spacing features where we could select all of them. They have even padding, so I can move them like this, or I could hot swap them like this. But let's say uh, a dev comes back and uh, says, hey, let's remove this middle item. All right, well, I'm gonna hide that from our layers. And now I have to come in here and manually move this back up. And for this one example, that's not too bad. But imagine that's across several screens. Or imagine this is a more complicated uh, nested layout where each one of these items has six sub items and they all have to be moved. If only there was a way to solve that. I can hear you asking that question. There is auto layout. So if we select all these items, we can use the hotkey shift A or on the uh, properties panel, we can press this plus button. But let's go ahead and press shift A. We can see it's been added to a frame and that frame has had auto layout added to it. Whenever you add auto layout to a set of items, it tries to be smart and intelligent about the uh, pre-inputted features. We have th uh, a few options here. We can see which direction this auto layout goes. We can see uh, how the width or height, depending on the direction, is set for this auto layout. We have a list of the horizontal padding, vertical padding, and then space between items. If we increase this, watch what happens. All these items, because they're individual items, have this amount of space, 40, between each of them. If we wanted to give them padding, we can increase that, and we can see this empty space. Now this container has padding, 24 by 24, we can see that empty space has been added on this container. So already you can start seeing the powerful features of having almost CSS-like properties. You know, you could put padding and margin uh, and space between items. Now let's look at something else really cool about this. Earlier I told you that auto layout lets you use the content of the container as an influencer to how auto layout works. So back to that first example of a developer coming back and saying, hey, let's hide this middle item. We don't need it. Now, if we go and we select this third rectangle and I hide it, boom, everything automatically responds to that change. Uh, that alone should already be blowing your mind. I, seeing that in their demo made me so pumped. Uh, this is huge. I, I don't know about you guys, but I make a lot of list items uh, and I'm constantly having to update that. So seeing this was a refreshing change. I can dive into some more details, but I'm gonna do that on other examples. So this is a good first look on how you set it up, right? You select your items, you can put them in a group or a frame, and then you add auto layout to it. Or you select all your items and press the hot key, and it will automatically group your items into a frame. It will add auto layout to it for you, saving you some time. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at how auto layout handles something that you probably didn't think of, but is, or could have been a big issue with this feature. Let's say we have a card with some text, okay? You can see in the layer panels, there's two separate items here. Now I wanna make them an auto layout. Now we've all created lots of buttons and fields and cards and I've seen hundreds of these background layers. You know, it's just a rectangle with some properties to give you that, that visual background. But really, it's if you think of it as a component, 
if we were to group these together in, a, in like a frame, the background, if you were to build it on the web or you know on iOS, whatever you're building this out, that's not, the, the background isn't a separate item. It, it's, it's the actual background of the overall component. Auto layout's really smart and it knows that. So if I was to select both of these layers and then press Shift A, watch what happens to these two layers. Okay, it's created a frame, twirl that down. All I have is my foreground text. My background layer is gone. Now Auto Layout knows it's the background layer based on a few internal properties that they haven't fully exposed. But also, um, from my own ideas, I believe it's grabbing that from it being the last layer in the group and it being the biggest visual item of all those uh, other items. So it's the background because it's the last layer in the group and it is containing visually all the other items. I haven't run into a situation yet, and I've been using this a lot, where auto layout hasn't grabbed the right layer for the background. I imagine it's also looking at the name of the layer, but I've had plenty of unnamed layers still be grabbed successfully. So whatever they're doing, it works and it finds that background layer. That's important because auto layout, it, it takes a little bit of the, of the manual control away from creating a layer and it puts that into the properties of the auto layout. So right now we can see this vertical and horizontal padding. If we change these, like watch what happens here. Let's say we want 24 and 24. The component changes its size because it's changing the padding around this text. If we were to add more, like say we duplicate this text, now the padding is around this whole thing because it's not setting the explicit size it's setting the padding of the content in the auto layout container so you don't want the background layer to be a component inside the auto layout then the padding would be around that and it wouldn't it wouldn't work properly the background should act as the background for whatever uh, the content has and of course it's associated padding so this is really cool uh, I'm showing this this to you now because this is going to come into play when dealing with pretty much all the other components you're going to use this feature on like buttons and input fields this is a very uh, helpful feature and in case it doesn't work which again I haven't had that happen um, you would uh, just go ahead and delete your background layer and then add your properties to the frame itself. We can see here the frame itself, which has auto layout on it, also has the padding or the corner radius. So I can increase this and that's affecting the background because the background is the parent frame. Let's go ahead and see how this would work uh, on a button. This is a very similar example. We just have these two layers here, a text and a background layer. Remember, we select both of these and then let's press Shift A to create an auto layout frame. Nothing should change. It's going to inherit the properties of the background layer uh, and put that on this parent auto layout frame. I can see the padding. I can see the stroke and the fill. Awesome. Now, this is when uh, I, I went from having my mind blown earlier to just crying tears of joy. I can finally come into a button and I can start typing and oh my god the button updates its width this is awesome I mean this alone makes this feature a lifesaver I, I can't tell you how, how amazing this is because then you can create a component of this uh, let's go do that and we can duplicate the component move that around we have instances of the component I can update this and then I can change the width here and then of course I can come down and update the fill and it all just works I mean my god it's it's so good and i'm so happy about it um and it's it's just it's great it's great to finally have this in figma you can use this feature though with items like buttons and input fields to really simplify the modularity of the component i can take this cart icon down here and say i want a button with an icon well let's go ahead and just drag this as a child of that frame and already I'm done. It's automatically spaced it out and I can change that if I want. You see, here's the uh, spacing between items. I can make that smaller. And just like that, I've got a button with an icon. And if I hide the icon, say this is a, a component and I want a child of it that doesn't have that icon, 
I could just hide it from the layer panel and we're all good to go. You can move layers around just by using the arrow keys and that will move them in the layers panel which will move them in their order visually on the auto layout frame. Super, super cool. Really great stuff. Here is a more complex example and this is going to show you how you can nest auto layout to create uh, more visually appealing or more visually complex layouts that are also still very responsive. So if you look at this card, we can twirl it down. We've got one auto layout which contains the card content and the card image and then the card content which is also an auto layout which also contains a button which is an auto layout frame. So you can nest these as much as you want and create very uh, complex visuals and complex interactions. There's no limit to how many times you can nest this. This will let you create very dynamic components. As I'll show you, let's say we have a card that we don't want an image. Oh, I can just twirl that down, hide the image. The card just works. Let's say we want a card without the button. All right, we'll hide the button, which is a child of the content. I'll hide the button and I'll hide the spacer. Normally, these would be different components because the way Figma used to work with resizing components and creating reusable components, it made more sense to create separate versions than to have one where you could hide stuff. Now I can create one full card and if I'm smart with how all of the layers are placed, I can have that card reused in several situations while still following the same singular component, which is just super, super cool uh, and very, very powerful. I can't wait to see what people do with this and all the crazy responsiveness things that are going to get made. It, it's going to be pretty insane. There's also some resources that Figma has, which again are very good. Go check them out. There's a great blog post. There's also a good help article about using some of the features of auto layout. The blog post talks about their thought behind it, how they plan to grow it, uh, which is great to hear that they want to expand this feature even more, uh, as well as just uh, some tips and tricks to other little things you can do with auto layout. Um, but I hope you guys are excited about this as I am. I can't wait to see what y'all do with that. Until next time, I'm Max.